deep, on one of the most remote islands on the planet, lives a creature so evil sounding that when Westerners first heard it howling through the night, the only name they could come up with was the devil. This is the fearsome Tasmanian devil. and you're watching Animal Logic. We just hit the tarmac here in Hobart, Australia, Tasmania. Tasmania, this is crazy. This is about as far away from home as I can possibly be on the globe. Let's go find some adventure. Characterized by its rugged, jaw-dropping terrain, dynamic landscapes, and sparse population, Tasmania is a wildlife stronghold. But there's one species that rules over the island, Tasmania's largest terrestrial carnivore, the Tasmanian devil. They look like a bear mixed with a dog, but with the pouch of a koala. In fact, early 19th century scientists referred to Tassies as bear devils due to this superficial resemblance. Yet, despite the resemblance, they are marsupials and are more closely related to koalas than bears. Tassie devils are the largest carnivorous marsupials left in the world. There used to be the Tasmanian tigers, aka thylacines, but since they've gone extinct, these are the next in line. But they're in danger too, aren't you, sweetie? <laughs> Around 3,000 years ago, Tassies did roam mainland Australia, but they were driven out by dingoes and humans, which either hunted them or hunted out their prey, causing them to go extinct in the region. If King Tut were to have visited Australia, he might have seen a devil roaming in the outback. Here in Tasmania, these devils can still thrive. When Europeans first landed in Tasmania, at night, they heard the ravenous howls of the Tasmanian Devil, a sound truly like none other, and assumed that it must originate from vicious killing machines, hence the name. Ooh, oh dear. These scrappy youngsters are really going at it. Their name is a bit of a misnomer, to be honest. Because these little guys are all about the bluff. These guys can put on quite a display. They'll open their jaws wide and snarl and grunt and make all kinds of noises. And that's really where their name came from. While they're not as aggressive as their haunting howl may lead you to believe, they do have incredibly powerful bites. Tasmanian devils have the strongest bite relative to body size among mammals and can easily crush bone. Their heads are huge relative to their body size and they have large muscular jaws. Their skulls bear a striking resemblance to another bone crusher, the hyena. They need these powerful jaws because when they eat, they consume the entire animal. Meat, bones, sinew, everything. Their bites exude a force of 553 newtons, crushing bones with their molars and tearing flesh with their giant incisors. They can open their mouths up to 80 degrees, allowing them to take bites as big as possible. Now, Tassie devils are scavengers. They get most of the nutrition they need from finding dead animals, but they will also supplement that by finding other small vertebrates and the occasional bugs if they can. Carrion makes up the largest portion of their diet, 
and they need their bone-crushing jaws to eat all the parts of the carcass deemed unappetizing by other scavengers and predators. With Tasmania being the roadkill capital of the world, the eating can be good, so long as they don't themselves turn into roadkill. So as a rule, Tasmanian devils don't like company. While they are solitary creatures, a meal is what brings them all together. Tazis are primarily nocturnal, and when the sun goes down, the devils come out to eat. There are usually between 5 and 12 devils within range of one another, and in a surprising act of kindness, their devilish howls draw their fellow Tazis to the scene of the crime. The devils pour out of the night and descend onto their meal. Howls echo through the night. They go into a feeding frenzy, ripping and tearing at flesh as quickly as possible. Between the yelps, the sound of bones snapping and flesh tearing fills the air. The dominant males eat first, and they get their choice of the softest and tastiest meat, like the eyes and innards. The smaller devils will have to settle for the less desirable bits, like the tails and feet. But they don't go down without a fight, and dinner time proves to be a good time for smaller males to prove themselves. Fearless, this male, fed up with having to eat the scraps, decides to challenge the dominant male. He lunges, snapping at the bigger male with his sharp incisors. The two males collide, trying to puncture each other's necks. But the larger male doesn't back down. With his bulk and larger teeth, the challenger has little chance. He did his best, but with blood dripping from his face, he'll have to settle for the tail after all. Dinner is a dangerous affair. This battle may be over, but the fighting will continue. Tasmanian devils have no chill. They will continue snapping at each other, trying to usurp the pecking order until the carcass is gone. Devils walk away from feeding almost as bloody as their prey. By adulthood, Tassies become heavily scarred from battle, looking more and more like their namesake with the passing years. Now, I've seen this entire feeding, and they've eaten this entire corpse in about 30 minutes flat. There's nothing left now but a few bones and skin. Because when you're a scavenger, you don't know when your next meal will be. So you have to rely on eating as much as you can, while you still can. The devils are ravenous, and will devour every part of a carcass, leaving nothing but bloodstains on the ground and howls in the air. Would you believe that these scrappy little guys behind me are actually Tasmania's largest predator. They might be small in regards to what we're used to in North America with uh, some rather large predators, but here in Tasmania, everything's a little bit smaller. And dwarfism is most often found on islands because there's less resources, less space to claim territories, and uh, just less room to grow. While their size certainly contributes to their cute charm, so does their gait. You may have noticed that they look funny when they run. This is because their forelimbs are longer than their hind limbs. This is unusual in the animal world, but they have these long forelimbs to help them climb. The trees in Tasmania are often very twisted and low to the ground. That works in their favor because they don't like going too high Juvenile devils, in particular, are good at climbing because they're often targeted by hungry adult males, and escaping into the trees is a handy trick. Not only are they good climbers, but they're quite adept swimmers, too. Tassie devils will swim when they need to cross rivers in their territory, but they also love hanging out in the water. 
they'll often wade out just to splash around, or to lay down in shallow water in order to cool off and relax. Who knew that Tassie devils liked swimming? Males are slightly larger than the females, and in the wild, they will weigh about 6 kilograms. Their main fat reservoir is actually located in their tails, and a plump tail is a sign of a healthy Tassie. These cute little pink ears are her tools for thermoregulation. Tassie devils don't really have many sweat glands, so in order to try and exude some heat, they'll pump blood through those ears, they'll turn a bright pinkish red color, through that they'll be able to reduce their body temperature. Tassies live fast and furious lives. Living to only five years of age in the wild, it's an intense ride. A mother Tassie devil's pregnancy only lasts about 21 days, after which she gives birth to 18 to 30 young. But she only has four teats, so only four lucky individuals get to latch on and grow. The surviving pups will stay with their mum for three months after they leave the pouch, becoming independent in the summer. These youngsters are all playing chase. But it's really training for them to become more territorial, defending their dens, defending their young, and most importantly, defending their food. At two years of age, they become sexually mature, and their mating process is even more hardcore than their birthing process. Females will mate once a year, the males will fight each other for not only mating rights, but also for the privilege to hang around her, preventing other males from mating with her as well. Adult female Tasmanian devils need to put on quite a bit of weight in order to endure the process of mating, because it's quite a brutal endeavor. Putting on weight helps defend them from the attacks of the male, who unfortunately does have to force himself on the female because they are not receptive, even in estrus. Putting on weight gives them a little bit of buffer in order to withstand those attacks. The mating process itself is rather horrific. It looks like a battle, and females can die during the process. While having such short lives doesn't sound great, it might actually be helping the species as a whole survive. In 1996, a disease called facial tumor disease started spreading like wildfire among the Tassie devils. And unfortunately, it has decimated about 90% of the populations all across Tasmania. In essence, devil facial tumor disease, or DFTD, is a cancer of Schwann cells, which are fundamental parts of the peripheral nervous system. Facial tumor disease is one of the only communicable cancers known to science. The disease starts as a growth around the mouth. As it spreads through their bodies, it pushes their teeth out from their mouths, making it impossible for them to eat, starving them to death. The disease will also grow into their joints, bones, and will cause mass organ failure. It also decimates their immune system, making them vulnerable to other diseases. It spreads quickly through populations and can completely eliminate an entire local population of devils in under a year. The reason it spreads so quickly is that it's transmissible through bites, and biting each other when competing for food and mates is a natural part of a Tassie's life. Symptoms may not always appear right away, and young devils may get it without presenting. They can pass it to others, and before we can do anything, the entire population will have been eliminated. Tasmanian devils were expected to go extinct by 2011, but thanks to conservation efforts here on Tasmania, they are still hanging on. Aren't you, little guy? There is a vaccine, but it is only effective against one strain of the disease, and there are many. In 2015, just five devils were successfully treated. Fortunately, it's quite possible that the devils will be able to beat this disease naturally. Since their generations are so short, they can quickly adapt to circumstances like these. 
devils that have genes that make them immune to the disease are becoming more and more common. Scientists now believe that there is a 57% chance that the devils will be able to coexist with the disease. But that doesn't mean we're not trying to help the odds. Young Tassie devils who are born in conservation like this one are what's called an insurance population. They'll carry the genetic diversity that might eventually repopulate the entire island. For those Tassies that are lucky enough to be rewilded, it's always considered what genes are being released into what areas to maintain that genetic diversity. One of the most ambitious captive release programs was on an island off the east coast of Tasmania. With no roads, electricity, or permanent residence, Mariah Island serves as the perfect site for Tassie devils. In 2012, 15 captive-raised, disease-free devils were released onto the island, and since their release, their population has thrived. Today, there are over a hundred devils living healthy, tumor-free lives on the island. There he is. Since then, 17 devils have been returned to the mainland in hopes of passing their stronger genes onto the next generation. So what should I talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. Thanks for watching. The Homo sapiens is the largest animal in Mariah Island. Sometimes after a long day of work, takes a nap on the bench.